What's going on YouTube? It's your boy JL Musi. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at how to create complex panel detail in Maya 2018. Now, I've been hard surface modeling for quite a bit of years, and I haven't came across many hard surface projects that don't have a certain degree of panel detail in them. We're gonna be up close in our mesh and these little panel lines. This is what I call getting it in the trenches. And towards the end of the uh, tutorial, I'll show you how to create these cylindrical details using instances. So how I use instances is I'll get my placement down first and using one mesh, which controls the rest of them, I will then create the final detail piece and have all the instances update. Now, I decided to push this mesh a little bit further than I do my other tutorial meshes. So, I uh, dropped a smooth modifier on it, and then I did a quick and dirty UV layout, and I took it into Substance Painter, where I applied a material on it, and this is the result that you're seeing here. So, I can't wait to share with you guys these uh, hard surface modeling uh, workflows that I learned over the years. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. So before I get started, I wanna break down the tools individually and I will point these out throughout the modeling process, but I think just pointing them out uh, in individual examples uh, with uh, simple geometry is going to be a lot uh, easier to grasp the concept versus when I'm just doing it uh, with a co more complex mesh. So the first thing that I want to display is uh, you'll see a thick uh, blue borderline when I work and that's a setting that displays the uh, border edges of the mesh. So any uh, edges that are detached uh, this display setting will actually show it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get some geometry here. I'll go to polygon primitives and I'll go ahead and just get a um, plane. And I'll just uh, scale it up. And I'm just gonna go to uh, wireframe on shaded. So with this setting, it should be enabled. And it is, right? Um, I'm going to go here and uh, hide the grid so it's a little bit easier to see. But you see that this uh, border edge is a little bit thicker. And this one as well. Uh, and if you don't have that setting enabled, uh, you can come here to... Should be under Windows. Uh, yeah, right here. Settings, Preferences. And I'm just gonna bring this over here. And if we look at polygons, we see that we have border edges enabled. And um, you know, you can leave this to two, even three. Sometimes what happens, uh, maybe it's a graphics card error on my, or a graphics card issue on my end. But what you will have to do is um, set this and uh, save and apply. If you see nothing happening, uh, just restart Maya. And that should uh, kick in the um, uh, the highlighted border edges. The next tool that I use quite a bit is called Detach. Um, and uh, I like Detach because it allows me to break away components, separate them, and double click on the island and be able to uh, make that a selection and move it independently. So for example, here I could come in and just select this, um, this edge loop here and then this section as well. And there's two ways of getting to it. Uh, I just like to hold down shift and right click. And you see that we have a detached components option. And now you see that we have a border edge. So what this is doing is actually detaching this component. So if I go down here to vert mode, you see that should be able to peel away that vert, right? So these components are no longer attached. So the cool thing about this is that if you go uh, into face mode, double click, you see that it'll allow you to um, select the island and then now you can move it. So I use this feature quite a bit. Uh, the next uh, thing that I use a lot is just my multi-cut tool. 
And if you hold down Alt, uh, you can add an edge loop. And if you middle mouse click, you'll be able to add an edge loop right in the middle. So that's always uh, beneficial when you want even spacing. Uh, you could also uh, hold down Control and Shift, and that will basically snap to whatever you have in the snap settings. So I'll use that as well. Um, if we the other, the next tool is uh, since we're on the uh, subject of uh, adding edge loops, is this works? Uh, but sometimes, if uh, for example. I'll go in here and I'll just add an irregularity. So a lot of times uh, using this, uh, you, you see that it averages out my result. Uh, sometimes we want to edge parallel to this and not have it averaged out between uh, those two edges. So what we could do uh, in this case, uh, we could use the uh, insert edge loop tool. So here you'll see that it's pretty much just even with that edge. So sometimes I'll have to use the insert edge loop tool. Um, the next thing that um, I use quite a bit is uh, just the scaling and moving the pivots around. So for example, um, I'm gonna go here, just kind of uh, mess some edges up. Right, so let's just say that um, we wanted to align these edges uh, along this. So basically we wanted to continue this straight edge. Well, how could we do this? Well, we could just select all these and then scale, flat, and then move and pretty much eyeball it. But there's actually just easier way. So I'm gonna undo this. And what I'll do is I'll hit D uh, with any transform uh, enabled. Uh, you'll see that you can edit the pivot. So from this point, I'll just hold down V and that's gonna vert snap the pivot here. And then uh, I can go back to the scale tool. And if I scale flat, um, I kind of did that uh, same result, but it did it a lot quicker and more precise. So I'm gonna start with a real basic example of pretty much the meat and potatoes of my workflow. So I'm gonna start with a plane here and lower the uh, subdivisions by two by two. And I'm gonna take the edges that I wanna create uh, these uh, panel indents from, and I'm gonna bevel them. And then once I bevel them and have thickness, I'll go ahead and extrude them inward. Now, uh, when you extrude inward, uh, you will get these caps that you need to delete. I also set my subdivisions to three because that will actually add a holding edge at the bottom and at the top. And it saves me the time from having to go back and do it manually. Now, you see as soon as I put it on a level three subdivision, uh, I'm losing all the detail and hardness of those corners. So I'm gonna go in here with the multi-cut tool and just um, add some reinforcing edges. And you see that this holds up a lot better. Uh, it's still a little bit soft, so I'm gonna go back and add a couple more edges to uh, have these a little bit more crisp. So I'm gonna go inside, and with the multi-cut tool, if you hold down control and middle mouse click, you will actually add a edge loop right in the middle of those two uh, edge loops, which is pretty beneficial if you wanna keep everything spaced out evenly. Now this is looking a lot better. Um, I will go inside the actual crease inside the corners uh, and reinforce those as well. And now you see that the uh, inner corner of the uh, depth is actually reinforced as well. All right, so I'm starting out with a uh, plane here, uh, pretty low on subdivisions. I don't have much of a concept uh, created for this. I'm just doing this on the fly. And I'm just visualizing where the uh, panel lines are gonna travel and I'm just throwing some uh, edge loops in there. Uh, I know that I want kind of this pill-shaped uh, panel in there as well. So what I'll do is I'll uh, start with the cylinder, uh, select the edge loops around a uh, cap and then detach the components. And that's gonna allow me to quickly delete this. I'll snap the pivot here towards the center of this cap and then holding V again, I'll snap to that middle vert of the panel. So 
So I'm just going to uh, extrude this out uh, to create some length here. And then I'll take these border edges and extrude out. And uh, I'll detach this as well and then delete the other side. So from here, I'm just taking these uh, two edges and uh, scaling in one axis. And I'll take the other two and scaling flat on the other. So I'm really just thinking about how this is going to tie in and stitch back into my main panel here. So I'm going to take these uh, two edges here and extrude out. And I'll take these two edges here and I'll extrude out as well. And I like to work modularly. So uh, whenever I can uh, work on a fourth and uh, duplicate and mirror, that's always works well for me. Uh, here what I'm doing is uh, taking the pivot and then just snapping into that vert and scaling uh, flat on the axis. So I just flatten out that edge. So I'm just going to move the pivot here um, on the center line and then just mirror on the X and I'll repeat the same process and mirror on the Y. So there's just the base for my pill uh, shaped uh, panel line. So right now I'm going through the process of adding edge loops on the other side and I'm trying to pretty much even the subdivisions out so I have a vert on the other side that I can go ahead and weld together. And you see as I uh, weld the verts together, uh, the thicker uh, border edges start going away. I'm also adding uh, additional loops and really thinking about how uh, my panel line is going to travel throughout this piece. So for this top uh, right corner here, I'm planning to have uh, pretty much, I'm planning to have a grate. Um, and there's just going to be a bunch of parallel edges that are going to be uh, beveled. Uh, and I'm going to concept this out, meaning I'm not going to pay too much attention to how evenly spaced it is. Uh, at some point, I will create one final one and duplicate it and stitch it back together. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to select all the edges um, that um, I want my panel line to travel through. And I'll do an initial uh, edge bevel uh, with two divisions. Uh, and then once I set that a little bit wider, what I'll do is I'll go back inside and select the center loop and I'll re-bevel that. Uh, essentially, I have a smaller bevel in the middle. That will be my panel line. Uh, on the outer edge, it's going to be a buffer, which uh, it'll help me with uh, edge flow and keeping kind of that uh, edge uh, crisp. So here I'm going to go through the process of uh, cleaning this uh, mesh up a little bit. Anytime that you run a bevel, uh, which is an automatic computation that Maya does, uh, you will need a little bit of cleanup, especially when doing hard surface uh, work like this. Uh, so what, what I'll need here, especially for this T uh, juncture of the uh, panel lines, uh, I want things to be pretty straight because um, I, I will need, uh, you know, quite a bit of holding edges here. So I'm just doing a little bit of uh, cleanup work here and then uh, around uh, this area as well. So just general cleanup work uh, for getting uh, the uh, panel lines ready to be extruded in. I'm going through and uh, selecting uh, pretty much every um, face that's going to be pushed in at this point. Um, for this grate here at the top right corner, um, this is more for just visualization. Uh, at some point, I will just produce one clean one uh, and then uh, pretty much symmetrize it and copy it over and over. But for now, this will work. I'll come down here and just uh, start double clicking and select that inner uh, edge loop, which is the one that's going to be pushed in. And 
and I'll come through here at this uh, pill shape as well. And I'll extrude in. And I'll set my uh, subdivisions down to three as well. And that's going to allow me to have kind of those reinforced edges already there for me. And there it is. So uh, we'll see as soon as I hit um, three on my keyboard, enable subdivisions. You see that I'm losing uh, a lot of the uh, crisp corners, but overall we're off to a pretty good start. So uh, now I'm just gonna start the process of reinforcing some of these edges. So I'm gonna work here on this grid area. So the first thing that I'll do is reinforce the edges so they don't collapse. And I'll do a little bit of cleanup work so these edges don't run into this pill form here, which is actually gonna go ahead and create some pinching on a circular area. So we definitely don't want that. So I'm just uh, deleting these uh, two edges here and making sure that everything's nice and quadded. And this looks pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just uh, clean up this edge here as well. And I'm just kind of uh, rotating around my mesh to make sure there's uh, no pinching on the one panel corner here that I'm working on. So now what I'm doing is um, uh, basically creating the pattern. So with the multi-cut tool, I'm holding that alt middle mouse clicking uh, because I want to create a repeatable pattern out of this shape. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll copy it over and over and over. And then I'll delete um, the symmetry lines later. So I'm just snapping the pivot here um, to this um, vertice, and then I will scale from here. And that's going to give me a nice uh, flat uh, edge from this one uh, vertice. Just adding a couple more loops to even things out. And I'm just selecting the pattern that I created. I will go ahead and go to Extract. And this is under Edit Mesh. So now this piece is peeled off from uh, my main shape. And then now I'll go ahead and select and gut out the area that it's gonna encompass. So now that I have um, half of my pattern done, I'll start the mirroring process. So I'm going to add a bevel here uh, inside the crease and that's going to go ahead and reinforce the edges on the inside. And I'm going to add this uh, one uh, edge here to create uh, just that complete symmetry line. Uh, I'm going to detach the components, double click here on this island and delete it. And now I can go ahead and mirror this um, on the X. And we pretty much have the first part of our pattern. So here what I'll do is I'll take the pivot and snap it to uh, one of the corners. And now uh, since I did one offset, uh, Control D will actually respect that offset. So I'm just doing this a couple of times. And then I'm going to go in here and merge down all the border edges. And you'll see that once the thicker border edge, once the thicker lines go away, that means that my border edges are uh, merged. And that's one of the uh, nice benefits of having that um, edge, um, border edge option turned in your preferences, because it's very easy to see uh, what's stitched together and what is not. So I'm going to mirror the rest of this grading over in the Z, and then I'm going to go through the process of uh, selecting all the border edges that pretty much act as uh, symmetry uh, planes and I'm going to go ahead and delete them. And I'm going to merge my uh, meshes here and I'll start uh, welding these verts together. So 
So now I'm just jumping around my mesh and I'm going to reduce some of this geometry, some of these parallel edges that are flowing through my mesh. Uh, you see here that uh, I had these three edges uh, needed to reinforce this one corner on the panel line. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two edges here, collapse that vert, and then delete the other two edges that just run straight through it. Uh, and then you see that I'm still pretty much quadded, uh, but I have this uh, diamond pattern going. So I'm just going to take these edges here, extrude them, and add some parallel edges here. And what I'll do at this point is I'll uh, add a little bit of geometry on the other side to have just uh, even verts to be able to uh, merge down and get rid of this seam. So I'll just merge them and you see that all the border edges went away. What I will do is just go back through and I'll collapse uh, any edges that I don't want uh, extending out and I'll collapse those edges with uh, kind of that diamond junction that I showed you guys earlier and I'll do that wherever it's needed and just connecting things just making sure those final little adjustments uh, that finalize your mesh and make sure that everything's uh, nice and clean. Uh, also get rid of these little caps uh, once you bevel and extrude down that are created at the corners. So I'm going to add a bit more detail to my piece here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of latches. Um, this is a typical design you see in a lot of hard surface patterns where it's uh, pretty much these two rectangular insets that go in there. And then you have uh, kind of this piece that would act as a latch uh, to the panel. So I'm just blocking this in uh, with the uh, insert edge loop tool and then alt mouse and middle clicking to add edge loops in between. So I'm just visually blocking out uh, where these uh, insets are going to go. And then I'm just taking those uh, edges there and beveling them to give me some width. And uh, just like before, I'm going to create uh, both patterns loosely. Uh, and then once I finalize one, I'll just take it and duplicate it and stitch it over. So, so I'll start by uh, deleting uh, these set of faces here. Uh, I basically want to push this down and kind of continue that ridge. Uh, and then I'll take these two top faces and extrude them down. Now, what I'll need to do at this point is uh, vert snap um, these set of faces. So what I'll do is I'll hit D on my keyboard, I'll hold down V, and I'll vert snap to this corner with both faces selected. And then I'll enable my translate tool and then vert snap again. And I'll make sure that everything is nice and flush at the same level. I'll take those other two faces, delete them. And now it's just a matter of merging these verts. So what I'm trying here to do is uh, merge these vertices and even a very little uh, a distance threshold, um, I'll get pinching, right? Uh, you might have this problem before, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and scale this up. And what's actually happening is that your scales are, are just a little bit too small. So those tolerances are too big and you get over pinching of your verts because you don't have enough scale. Uh, just scaling this alone, as you see, is not enough. So what you'll need to do is freeze your transforms, and I'm going to also delete my history just to be safe. And now you'll see that um, if I select my verts again and I do a vert merge, the threshold now works just because that scale is a lot bigger. So I'm going through here just adding a little bit more space. And I'm just going to focus on this lower piece, and this is the piece that I'll eventually end up duplicating and shifting over. Uh, just doing a little bit of edge flow work for these edges to hold up uh, their uh, crease a little bit better. Uh, I'm going in here and using the connect tool on this ring, and that's going to enable me to add uh, these uh, evenly spaced out divisions. And then I'll just continue the pattern on with the multi-cut tool, select the verts, and then merge. So I'm going to throw uh, two cuts here, and those two cuts, uh, you see that I'm creating a try. Those are going to be kind of a stopper 
to let me create an edge loop and not have it travel all the way down. And from there, later on, I, I will go ahead and delete them. So I'm just adding uh, one more uh, edge loop here in the middle. Um, now that's quadded out. And adding another edge loop here on the side to basically just sharpen up that edge. So I'm pretty happy where this is right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just select uh, all these faces here. And I'll go ahead and do an extract. From here, I'll take the extracted piece and just mirror it over in the X. I'm just going to go ahead and gut out the area that it's going to encompass. And from here, I'll go ahead and use the bridge tool to uh, just kind of connect that gap that I had and merge those verts. So I'll mirror this one more time in the Z. And this pretty much filled our gap. Uh, and now we just have to take care of this left side here. So I'll just uh, extrude and then uh, scale flat and then vert snap uh, once to the vert and then once again to the uh, other vert to just align that. Adding some more holding edges here. And finally just merging down all those verts. So uh, from this point, I'll, I'll just take this uh, finished uh, detail piece here and I'll duplicate it. And I've already added some um, inner uh, detail here, just these two latch pieces with the methods that I've pretty much been covering. So I'll just go ahead and shoot this over where I want this second set to be. And I will just snap the pivot to the corner here of this piece and then I'll move it holding down V so it's precisely on that corner. And I'll select this edge loop and scale it inward. And then just uh, vert snapping here to this edge. Um, I'll connect this uh, on this border edge as well. And I'll gut out the area that it's going to encompass, combine the mesh, and then just select verts and weld. And I'll just take a little bit of time here and uh, connect these edges and clean up the rest of the edge flow. Uh, I cleaned up my panels and overall shapes a little bit more, straightened out some edges. And from here, I'm going to create some uh, circular indents where some bolts could go in. This is a very uh, common type of shape in hard surface modeling. You see this quite a bit. So here, instead of just using a static mesh, I'm going to create a, a system of instances. And the beauty about this is that uh, you can actually get the placement down first and then you worry about the shape. Uh, I used to actually just do this with static meshes that wouldn't update, so I would go model all this detail, and then if you wanted to make a change later, you would actually have to go backtrack a lot, delete, and re-update. So using instances is a very flexible workflow uh, for this type of model. So here, the first thing that I'll do is just, I'll get a cylinder here, and I'm gonna use uh, eight divisions that usually tends to work well for this type of shape. Uh, and then the next thing that I want to do is create some instances from this. So I'll go to modify and then I'll do the uh, duplicate special and I'll go to the options here and I want to make sure that I'm working on instance. And you see on the left hand side on the outlier that I have some instances. 
uh, when creating this to uh, make sure that you put an offset that really doesn't matter um, I usually like to put it in the X but that way they're not stacked on top of each other that makes it a little bit easier in selecting them so I'm just taking these uh, instances here and just visually playing around and see where I kind of want these uh, in a circular indents to go so I finalized the placement of the uh, instances and I'm going to work here with uh, pretty much my uh, master shape here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just snap that pivot and make sure that's snapped again. So it's in the middle of that intersection. And one thing about um, instances, the way that they work is that uh, on a component level, they will follow the master shape but on object level, they won't. So it's almost like a parent-child relationship. So that does give you some flexibility, but if you do want to control the overall shape, uh, you want to make sure that you are scaling and working with the components and not on object level. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and snap this and place it right here, flat on the surface, and then select the uh, outer edge loop and extrude out. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, select the area that uh, this uh, cylindrical indent is going to take and I'll extrude inward. And then I'll just uh, gut the inside out. So from here, I'll just go ahead and vert snap. And I'll, I'll go ahead and do the same uh, in these areas. So pretty much the areas that it's going to encompass, I'll just cut it out. Just to have a uh, visual reference. So I'll go back in here and I'll start doing uh, some detail work. I'll extrude inward. And I'll extrude again and push down. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to end up detaching this cap from uh, the rest of the shape. And you'll see that um, I'll have a border edge there pop up. That means that it's detached. Uh, I'll go ahead and extrude, or sorry, I'll go ahead and bevel that center uh, edge. That's going to give me some thickness. And I'll just go ahead and extrude inward. And I'll add three subdivisions so the holding edges are there. And then from there, just with the multi-cut, I'll start inserting edge loops to reinforce the shape. So from here, I'll just double click to select that a polygon island since it was detached. And I'll rotate 45 degrees to give that um, bolt um, just a little bit of an angle. And then I'll just vert snap here to basically just finish out the shape and fill up the hole. So I'm going to go on to this next area here. I'll select the border edges. And I'll extrude uh, inward. And then uh, from here, I'll just vert snap to the uh, cylinder here to the outer edges. And then uh, what I'll do here is I'll just uh, create a bridge and add two or uh, one division that'll give me that middle vert and then I could just snap here and just straighten that one out and I could just snap the pivot right there to there and scale and it'll be uh, pretty much straight so I'm going to do the same process on this last hole that I need to fill give this a little bit more room Select these outer edges, extrude inward, get these verts, snap to the outer cylinder, and then just select these two, bridge, snap that middle vert, and then just um, snap the pivot there and scale flat. And I'll go ahead and give these guys a little bit more breathing room.
So now to break the connection, um, you can't really uh, just delete history. It doesn't work, even though you might think deleting history would break the connection. Uh, what you want to do is convert uh, from uh, instance to object. And now the connection will be broken. I'll just go ahead and merge these down. And now we have uh, pretty much our finished piece. So from here, I'm just going to give the overall shape some thickness, add some holding edges. Uh, I'll also uh, go in here and add an edge loop, bevel it, extrude inward uh, to make an additional panel line coming down the side. And from here, I'll just do a uh, number of mirrorings to basically create a, a symmetrical piece. And lastly, uh, I'll go in and pretty much using the methods that I used earlier, I'll add a additional panel line right down the center and just delete these uh, extruded faces, uh, merge down my verts, clean up and finalize the shape. I hope that you enjoyed the video uh, and that you're able to apply some of these workflows to your own hard surface modeling projects. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And let me know if you have any questions. I try to get to everybody's comments and give you guys feedback. And also let me know the tools that you guys like using when you're doing your own hard surface models. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on IG, Facebook as well. I'll catch you next time.